self-hosted instance of GitLab, and I use it as a playground for some of my personal projects. And for those who don't know, GitLab is a self-hosted version control, and it's very similar to GitHub, but I really do like a lot of its integrations and its overall stability. And I was poking around with the source code of the Community Edition one day, and one of the things that I usually do when I'm checking out a application is I go under the configs and then the routes.rb file, and I notice something pretty cool within here. So within the routes.rb file, they have this draw method, and it appears throughout the entire routes file. And this really intrigued me, so I wanted to look up what they were doing here and how they actually did it. So after poking around in the source code, I found under the config initializers the routing draw.rb file. And if we look at this, it's created an additional method on the action dispatch routing mapper. And it takes in a routes name and then it calls instance eval and then it reads from the file and it reads the config routes and then the name of the file.rb. So this helper method is basically rendering a partial within our routes. So within our application, under the config initializers, we'll create a routing draw file, and within here, we'll call in our class action dispatch routing mapper. We can then create our draw method. And once we save this, we can then create a routes folder within our config directory, because that's where this method is explicitly looking for those routes RB files. Within our application, let's say we allow our customers to communicate with a open API, but then we also have a web front end which we can display our content. So as our application grows, this routing file can become really unmanageable and unmaintainable and just start to get really confusing. So thanks to this new draw method, we can extract out our API into its own subsection of files. So we'll cut all the relevant code relating to our API, and then we can just call draw API. And because we are calling the API here, that means that we will have to have a API file under our config routes API. So if we go ahead and create that, we can then just simply paste in the same code and then fix the indentation. So I think we can clean this up a little bit more. So we have the scope for version one and also a scope for version two. And I think we can extract these out because these scopes can also become really large as our application grows. So I think it'd be helpful if we had like a draw version one, and then a draw version two. However, I really don't like doing this because then we're gonna have these version files all within the same routes folder. So I actually wanna modify what GitLab has done and then add in additional parameters so we can create some spacing within the routes folder. So back in the routing draw file, I'm going to replace this draw method with something like this where we just have a additional path and I'm just calling this subpath and we check if the subpath is present and if it is then we add a extra interpolation here where we can then reference to a set of subdirectories otherwise then we'll just call the normal instance eval that we had before. So now we can clean this up and make it a bit more simple where we can then just call API and now we'll expect to see the v1.rb file under the config routes API and then v1.rb. So let's go ahead and create this folder. So if we create a new folder, we'll call it API. And then within here, we can create a new file and we're just gonna call this v1.rb. And within the v1.rb file, we can copy in the relevant code for the version one of our API. And back within our API RB file, we can actually reduce this down to a single line where we have an array of V1, V2, we map through it. So we're looping through each one of these objects within the array. Then we call draw API and then we reference our API path. And it can take a symbol as well. So within our terminal, if we call rails routes or rake routes, we can see that we have our API and it's still working the way we would expect with the version one and version two with the appropriate namespacing. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.